Hey everybody, how's it going? Jeff Shackley here, drum instructor at Freeway Music. And today I want to come to you with a concept that uh, some may think is fairly simple, but a lot of people forget how to do it right, including some of the more professionals. Uh, and this is the art of how to practice. Like I said, that might sound kind of like a, duh, I mean, you just sit there and play something over and over until you can play it right. I mean, that's practicing. You know? And to some people that is. Uh, and at the most basic form, that is practicing. But a lot of us tend to make a mistake when we practice something. So say we've got a pattern. Let me play a pattern for you that I like, okay? And then we're going to take a look at how we normally run into practicing things like this. So that's a pattern that I worked up right before we started. I liked the sound of it. it sounded fun to me. Uh, you'll notice how it's two measures long, and the first measure is pretty straightforward. It's stuff that we play all the time. Uh, but the second measure starts to get a little bit more involved. Not crazy, but it's just a little bit different, and it's not quite as straight ahead as some other things that we would play. Now, the mistake that a lot of people are going to make is this. Let's see if you can spot it. Do you get it? Do you see where the mistake is? The mistake that so many of us make all the time when we practice? I just kept starting the entire thing all over again. I didn't have a problem with measure one. I could play measure one all day. But measure two is where the problem was, and yet I just keep playing measure one over and over and over and over and over again. There is so much wasted time in practice when we repeat the things that we already know instead of focusing on the things that we don't. Now, I don't want that to sound like we should never go over the things that we know. That's not what I'm saying. It's important to go over everything, new stuff and old stuff, uh, in order to make sure that we stay up on it and we're the best musicians that we can be. But when it comes to a particular example, if you're focusing on one phrase and like three quarters of the phrase is something that you know, but one quarter of it isn't, and you just keep trying to play the whole thing, you're going to waste lots of valuable time. And it's going to take you much, much longer to learn the new concept or get better at the concept that you're not as good at than it would if you just focused on that one part. Okay? So say you're looking at that beat, and I said, the second measure, that's where things got hard. That's where things got weird. Okay? I don't need to play measure one a thousand times. So normally, I would try to play the whole thing. That's where I would start. I'd try to play my entire example. And if it were just like what I just played, and I kept messing up as soon as I got into measure two, then after I played it two, maybe three times, and messed up in the same spot, ding, 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 there's your indicator. You're messing up measure two. That's where you focus. So then... We use some of our other tried and true practice methods. Number one, slow down. It's important to take things slower when you're learning something newer or working on something hard so that it gives your body a chance to catch up with your noggin. Okay, so take that thing slow. I usually try to run it through maybe a couple of times without a metronome, but once I start understanding what I'm playing, then you turn that metronome on and you lock in. Always have that metronome handy. So you take a look at the second measure, something kind of like this.
Now, the next step, once you actually understand what you're playing and you feel comfortable playing it, what I like to do is I like to look at that skill in comparison to the other skills I was using in the example. You'll notice that I could play measure one at a fairly comfortable pace, at a, at a, a, a decent, moderate tempo, okay? But measure two, man, I'm playing that guy slowly because I'm still getting used to it. So my next step would be in practicing is to get my measure two as close to my measure one as possible. A lot of my students will then, you know, pull measure one way back to match measure two. And that's not bad, but then what happens is that, again, you keep just focusing on the stuff that you already know, and you're not really working on the stuff that's harder for you. If you just keep focusing on the stuff that's hard, build that up, then eventually when you're ready to put it back in with the old stuff, it'll be ready to fit in just fine instead of s sticking out like a slightly sore thumb. So I would just take that and work up the speed a little bit until I could get it with the rest of my group. And there I went overboard a little bit. I played it faster than the rest of my groove. And sometimes I like doing that too, because again, that just kind of pushes it, pushes it, pushes it till it gets to a certain level that again, once you put it in with everything else, boop, it goes together. It works, okay? You don't have to worry about your new skill necessarily dragging your old skills back down. Okay, now you know the whole thing and you feel comfortable with it. So what you do is you put it back together. Now, I know I just said something about not slowing down your old skills or bringing back your old skills to match a low tempo with the new skills. But sometimes when you're putting the whole thing together, it's still best to pull back your tempo just a little bit. Give yourself a chance now to put the whole thing together and then start pushing that speed. But you don't have to go quite as slow as you were doing with the new skill in the beginning. Like so. So origi our, our original tempo is like somewhere around here. I'd bring it right about here, so not much slower, but just a little bit further back to try and put the whole thing together. And then when that's good, you can start speeding it back up. So let's try it. make it faster just for fun. So again, this is how I approach it uh, approaches approaches. This is how I approach practice approaches. Uh, I like to break it down, find what's holding me back and bring that up to my standard. Don't lower my standards to that guy's standards. Bring him up to my standards and then bring him in with the rest of my grooves. Okay. That's how I like to handle any new musical thing that I'm working on. And if you practice that way, 
it will save you guys a lot of valuable time, uh, stress, and energy when you're trying to figure out something new. So there is our tip for this week. Uh, just remember, as always, stay safe, have fun, practice with a metronome, and we will see you guys next week. Take care.